Hello, sleepers and celebrators. My name is TB Sky, and <laughs> so Riot just announced everything. They announced all of the all of the things. They announced everything, and now I have to make videos about it. Okay. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna sum up all of the things that they've announced so far. I say so far because right now I'm looking at the goddamn celebrate.leagueoflegends.com site and they're counting down to another thing. And they've also just released a champion roadmap with like five new champions on it, plus a Volibear and Fiddlesticks update, which I'm gonna have to cover, so... God knows, by the end of the day, maybe I have to make another one of these videos to just sum up all the stuff. But that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna sum up what Riot announced how far along in development it is, like how much of it is there to comment on. I'll do a few quick little analytical hot takes and then I'll, I don't know, drink 14 Red Bulls and not sleep for a week while I'm trying to <sighs> catch up on all of this. Okay, so first of all, we're getting TFT and League of Legends on mobile. So that's a thing. And the mobile League of Legends has a whole ton of new animations and new character models and uh, just a ton of artwork that's gone into that particular version of the game, including some really fantastic animations, actually, uh, made by Rory Alderton. Like, I think he's the animation lead on that game? Uh, I may be wrong about that, but he's one of the best animators at Riot uh, that I know about. Like, I followed his work for a while, so that's... So there's that. I'm gonna try and find a way to get access to the various skin intro and, and intro animation bits from Wild Rift, as many of them as I can anyway. And we'll do some animation breakdowns on like those specific animations, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the aesthetic differences between Wild Rift and the base League of Legends game. And we'll talk about the fact that characters like Jax and Misfortune have entirely new character models in Wild Rift that look like a lot better than the base League of Legends game, and we'll talk about like why they can't just take the good character models from the mobile game and put them in the PC game because they can't actually do that. And we'll talk about some of the pressure that I hope Riot are gonna come under to update their older champions in base League of Legends now that they look so much better in the Wild Rift version. Like, especially Blitzcrank just looks comically better in Wild Rift than he does in base League of Legends, and that's not a sustainable situation for them, I think. As for Teamfight Tactics, I play it a lot, but it doesn't actually come with any new art or animation or lore for me to talk about, so not a lot for me to dive into there. On the other hand, Project A, which is their Overwatch CSGO hybrid clone thing, they, they basically they announced an FPS, and from my first looks at it in the trailers that they're showing, it looks like it's really heavily targeted at mobile, at least looking at the way the environments look right now. So I'm going to try and dive into some of that footage a little bit more and try and suss out because like that one is early in development. It doesn't even have a title yet. So it might just be that its aesthetics right now are the result of being early in development. Uh, so I'll, I'll take a dive into that and try and see if I can suss out anything from the visuals and aesthetics of that game and compare it maybe to Overwatch, compare it to something like CSGO a little bit and talk about how the visual aesthetics of this game try to set it apart a little bit. Some people have already pointed out that some of the guns in this particular game seem to have like project logos on them, like Project in the League of Legends universe, and some people are saying, hey, maybe it's a prequel to the Project skin line somehow, which I feel like it's probably not. Like, that feels doubtful to me, but you, we'll have a look at it. Then there's the fighting game. They call that one Project L. So Riot bought Radiant Entertainment, which was a company that was founded by former rioters, and they put they had put out, like, a, 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 the early parts of a game called Rising Thunder, which was getting some hype around the fighting game community, but it, it never got off the ground because Riot bought Radiant Entertainment, discontinued Rising Thunder, and now it turns out what they were working on is an actual League of Legends fighting game. Now, this game, we really got very, very, very little footage from the game itself, but I'll try and take a look at it and comment on it a little bit because it looks more like your Street Fighter V's or your Mortal Kombat's in terms of how it approaches in-game physics, and it looks a lot less like your Guilty Gears or your Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious about that one. There's also Project F, which seems to be a kind of co-op, brawling, sort of action RPG-ish. A little bit Diablo-like, but it doesn't seem to have loot drops, at least not in the build that we saw on stream. We have seen very little of it, but it has a bunch of gorgeous graphics, and again, that much better Blitzcrank 
like character design that looks so much better than the base game that again riot you're gonna have to do something about that at some point um we saw barely anything about it and i'll take a look over the footage and i'll try and see if i can justify making a video about it and if i can't find enough to make a video about like individually project f or project l like the fighting game or, or the ARPG, then we'll maybe slash that together in one video and, and put it out that way. Then there's Legends of Runeterra, the card game, which is the one that's closest to release. Of all of the things they announced, it seems to me that the card game and the mobile version of League of Legends, and maybe mobile TFE, like those are the ones that are actually close to release and everything else is like way the hell in the future. Now I'm curious about this game because it looks like it addresses a lot of my issues with Hearthstone specifically, and it has a better monetization scheme, so that might be worth getting into, but Besides all of that, of course, holy shit, the art on these cards is absolutely amazing. I have been spending quite a lot of my day so far going through every possible source I can find, downloading the card art, and we're gonna do, and I think it's just gonna be one long-ass five-hour video or whatever the fuck, however long it takes, maybe we'll live stream it, where we just look at the card art for Legends of Runeterra. As much, I found like over 350 pictures so far. We'll look at those. And we'll comment on them, we'll talk about the character design that's on display, because there's some really fucking cool character design on display. And I don't know when we're gonna do that, but hopefully soon. Besides that, Senna was announced, and she was announced with an animated short of her own, I presume in order to avoid her being overshadowed by all of the everything else. So I think we're gonna do an animation breakdown on the Senna Lucian animated short, including stuff from The Climb that they published way the hell back in God knows when, and the teaser that led into it. We'll sort of take a look at all of those in combination, and then the Senna Lucian thing. Then we'll do, what's the deal with Senna? What's the deal with Lucian? And probably what's the deal with Thresh? I'm not sure if those are gonna be one video, or three separate videos, or if I'm gonna do what's the deal with Senna on her own, and then try and do a whole wrap-up thing about the whole Shadow Isles, Senna, Lucian, Thresh, three people lineup thing. Honest, I don't know. I don't know. I'm chaotic right now. Well, that's the plan. Finally, and this is, oh my god, this is gonna be the big one for me, isn't it? They finally announced an animated series. Arcane is coming. We don't know where it's gonna be published or where it's gonna be streamed, uh, so I don't exactly know what kind of content I can make about it. Obviously, I'm gonna do animation breakdowns about it. Obviously. I said on stream that I wanted to do like five hour animation breakdowns for every 20 minute episode or something along those lines. And I'm tempted to do that, but it depends because if this thing gets released on Amazon or Netflix or one of the platforms, then I can't do that because Netflix will destroy my entire fucking YouTube channel for that. And then I'll have to choose specific little moments and stuff to talk about instead. If Riot are going to be streaming it for free, the same way that they do with a lot of their other content, well, <laughs> then... <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, <laughs> then I'm gonna have to struggle with myself not to do full animation breakdowns of entire fucking episodes. Maybe I'll do an animation breakdown of one entire episode of the show. Maybe maybe that's how we'll do it. But oh god, I'm gonna have so much to say about Arcane. Holy shit! Because it's being made by Studio Fortiche, which are the same people who made the uh, Jinx music video, like Get Jinxed music video, and they did, uh, I think, the Rise music video as well. They've done a lot of work with Riot before, and they are fucking amazing. Like, they're an amazing animation studio. They've got amazing people and fantastic work over there, so I'm really fucking excited for that. And so, god, finally, okay. They also announced an eSports management game, but they didn't really show us anything about it, and it's only going to be coming out for the LPL to start with, which is in China, so that's, it's going to take a while for that to cross over into the West. I don't know if I'm going to make any content about that. I don't see how I would, but it might be the first sports management sim that I actually play. They've also just released an, a champion roadmap featuring announcements of five new champions that are coming. Well, th two reworks and three new champions, more specifically. Fiddlesticks and Volibear are well along, and Fiddlesticks looks great. Volibear I'm a little bit disappointed with. Separate video about those guys later on. They're also teasing two new champions. One of them seems to be an Ionian juggernaut top lane brawler kind of character. We don't really see anything about him, except a visual that indicates that he's from some kind of underground fighting arena. Then there is the more interesting new champion announcement, which is a marksman, who as far as I can make out, is the first new Lunari to be added to the game. 
sins Diana. Like, there's a lot of, oh, she's protecting the faith from the people who stand in the sun, like sun, moon, lunari, solari, that's the, that whole thing. It implies that she's a weapon-swapping character, like she's been mastering many different weapons, swapping through them like cycles of the moon with nothing but that one lone voice pushing, comforting, loving. And so the implication there is that she's another Lunari champion, and I'm wondering exactly what kind of connection she's going to have, or they are going to have, to Diana. We don't actually know the gender of this particular champion. So, to try and sum it all up... <sighs> ah! Hi. So, I have a lot of work to do now. If you would like to help me, you can like, comment, and subscribe, or take advantage of my tip jars, or my Patreon, or look at my merchandise store, if you want. And those things are definitely helpful. You can also tune in if I do any streams, particularly of the card game art, and talk about that. Tune in for that, hang out, and, and, and you know, just stick around with me, because I, I do love being around you guys, and I will need all the moral support I can have. I'm a little strung out right now. I can't think of a cool thing to say about the dislike button, so have a good one. Bye.